Hi, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I'm Jocelyn. And we're here to bring you a video on something completely different, but I think a really great idea. Um, one of our, one of the fans gave this idea, one of our, one of our fans, one of our friends gave us this idea about working with sock blanks, right? So this is going to be completely different, hooking, punch needle, whatever. We're going to be working today with a sock blank. Now, let's back up a little bit, and we're just going to talk for a minute, and then Jocelyn's going to talk because we're working on her design today. But I'm going to tell you what the benefits of using these sock blanks are. What this is, is essentially an already machine knit piece of, now this comes from, this is a single knit worsted weight, approximately will be 220 yards of yarn of wool. This comes from Homemade by Homesteader on Etsy and Homesteader is not an ER it's just an R at the end. Homemade by Homesteader. I'll put a link in the description. So what a sock blank is if you don't know is again a pre-knit piece of material machine knit which like any knit is on one side going to have the ability to unravel immediately and on the other side is going to be very very secure. So what we are going to do with this is reverse engineer I'll probably end up hooking rather than punching, although I haven't decided yet. But what I want is yarn, wool, that's beautiful and hand-dyed by Jocelyn and myself uh, to fit a piece of hers that she designed this summer. And I don't want to go through all the shenanigans that usually are implied when you're working with a skein of wool. So you hold the sock yarn blank. You can buy these things as a blank. This costs $17. Um, for again 220 yards of material which is quite a bit for somebody who's hooking or punching so let's start by saying this is Jocelyn's design that she did in the back seat of the car while we were on the Cape a few weeks ago and I was in the bookstore for too long um, the windows were down and it was not 120 degrees like it is today so I traced it and I transferred it onto my uh, fantastic Michelle Micarelli linen and you know I, I, I surged the edge, not surged, I zigzagged the edges, I have a video on that too just to keep them secure because it wants to unravel so I've got little crab, what should we call little crab? Little crab? Yeah. Okay. I've got little crab in the middle of the canvas and we haven't decided yet how much we want to put around him but ultimately Jocelyn has decided that she doesn't like this color of blue that I made for little crab and she would she wants turquoise blue so I will be dyeing a skein as part of this video just solid for little crab and then we will be using the sock blank for the background and we're going to show you how that works but the idea is we are going to hook this image today so I'd already dyed this one and Jocelyn wanted something more tur turquoise so I have the turquoise dye out and we're going to dye that in a minute now Backstory: when you're starting with a skein like this that's already um, wound, right? It's just pure wool that's already wound. I usually take out my knitty knotty. This is, this is called two words, knitty knotty. And what I do is this kind of business with it, and I wind with it. And this is how I know how much yardage I've... Oh, well, that piece broke, so that was the punchline. This is how I know how much yardage I've got going. I would unwind the whole skein and keep it going that way. And I would end up with this whole skein on the knitty knotty, wound perfectly, I would remove it like this, and coming off of the knitty knotty, it would look like this, okay? Just like this, it's all tied, ready to go, and I literally, we aren't using this one for this project, because I don't think this is Joss's favorite color scheme, but I literally um, dyed it like this, just dropped it in a dye bath and splattered some colors on it. So when you do your own wool or you buy wool from the store you end up with something like this that looks like this at the store that's called a hank right and it has a, th a thing on it that says whatever studio whatever knits and then you've got to turn this into this a cake so you can actually use it and it doesn't get messed up you might know this already i'm just starting from scratch for people who don't know the way that you turn yarn um, off the knitty knotty or in a hank from the store into something that you can use for hooking or punching is with two things. A swift, this is a swift, this is an umbrella swift, this is the most common. You hook it to your table, you tighten it up here, it takes, takes a lot of space. Um, 
you're guaranteed to bump into it 45 times for every five minutes that it's up. Uh, bumps into everything that's anywhere near it. But this is an Umbrella Swift. And you have this up while on your lap or on a table, you have one of these guys, which is a winder. And your winder has a piece of string, a piece of yarn from your hank, which is on that umbrella. And you're spinning it like this and you're turning it into a cake. And when it comes off, it's a cake. But what you've done at this point was invested in a swift, invested in a winder, and presumably you're going to do this many times to make this all worthwhile so that you can go from this to this, which is something with a string hanging off of it that will not get tangled because it's already in a cake and it's usable. So that's what we avoid when we work with the sock yarn blank. The sock yarn is already secure, right? This, this is the secure side. This is a side that will unravel when we want it to, not before. And what we can do is dye the sock yarn blank, and, and it comes in different weights. That Most of them are like the fingering weights and the sock yarn weights. Um, I got the worsted weight because I want to hook with it and I want something more substantial or punch with it. So what we can do is dye, the, we're going to dye the background first. I think you said turquoise? Yeah. Turquoise for the crab, not the background, for the crab. We're going to get the turquoise right for the crab first. Um, she doesn't want to stick with red. She wants to go artsy with this. And then we are going to um, soak this. And that you, I've done quite a few videos on dyeing um, on the stove top. And that's what we're doing here. So if you want to look at those in conjunction, I'm literally going to be soaking this in Synthropol, which is a wetting agent. And then we're going to be dyeing it. And Jocelyn's going, going to be hand painting it. And she will hand paint this whole piece in the colors that she wants to complement the turquoise crab so that we can use this as the background once she's dyed it and painted it and it's exactly the way she wants it to be I'm going to put it on the table pull the part that wants to come off off and start hooking with it and it's gonna unravel like it would a sweater and instead of using a cake and a swift and a winder and a hank and all of those other forms, I'm going to work straight from the sock blank onto my punch needle or hooking hook and directly into the backing fabric. So no middlemen. That's why this is a neat technique using a sock yarn blank because this is it. You're dyeing this in a designated pot. It's very contained. There's, not, there's really not a lot of middlemen going on here. Now let me ask you this, Jess. Since this is your piece that we're working on, um, what was your what was your inspiration for this? Like, what made you want to draw a little crab? Because we're at Cape Cod and mm -hmm. we want to draw something, and we're at Cape Cod. So we yeah, we were on Cape Cod. She wanted to draw something that had to do with the sea. You were collecting a lot of crabs around that time too, if I remember, right? Yeah. Yeah. So hence the birth of Little Crab. So, and what makes you want to make his body turquoise? You can talk to the camera. I don't really know. Just inspiration, whimsy, whimsical inspiration. <laughs> well, bottom line is she's a wonderful artist. She's a great artist. She does things like this when she's in the car for five minutes on her own. She's done a lot of hook drugs designs that I've hooked. And I really revere her work and take her work seriously, which is why I use a lot of it with my own designs. So if she wants a turquoise crab, she's getting a turquoise crab. Let's go do the turquoise crab right now, huh? Yeah. Put us on pause. So we just finished dyeing our blues. We decided this could be the color for the crab, but we have an outline for the crab. So you've got your turquoise, the light turquoise for the body, and then we've got the darker turquoise to outline him. Yes. So, okay, cool. And you've got the big piece of sock blank laying out, and we dyed it the Pro Chem color pink sand. Pink? So now pink, it's called pink sand, and now Jocelyn is going to demonstrate fabric, fabric painting onto it. And this is going to be, I think we said, about 220 yards of wool. Mama burnt her hand terribly with steam, so I'm going to be sitting on this side with my hand in a bucket of cool water, and you are going to demonstrate the painting of this, right? So go ahead, show us. And show how we do a demonstration here to check what color it is before we start, you know, before we start going crazy. Wait, what is it? 
So that's just to sprinkle one of these on, right? To figure out what color it actually is, because it's hard to tell just by looking at the bottles. All right, so pick what color do you want to start with? This. Okay. I had a good idea by like, this is one of the swooka ones. Uh huh. So, so if you saw in, our, in one of our other videos, we like swooping around, and I feel like it would be a good idea to do it with sand. I guess. Yeah, I think that is this a good is idea. This is why we have the tarp. I just made you these new colors too. Yeah, we have a plastic tarp down. Yeah, I got wine. These are all cushion colors. I just did wine. Um, some of them are hot. That's how we know those are the new ones, I guess. Yeah. Um, there's old gold. That's one of our favorites too. But you let me know if you want help with reading. But yeah, Mama just did a whole bunch of new colors. That's how. So I'm just gonna burned. start. Literally. Okay, good. So that's kind of a yellowy color. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's the orange. That's the bright orange. Yes. Yeah. Remember to leave room for other colors, baby. Yeah, I'm just trying to like. Roll it a little bit like this. It's a it's a little harder to do hand dye in this because it kind of stretches. And yeah, and if you haven't been keeping track of what your colors are, this is what we do. We just give it a quick little, and then we know that that's definitely so purple. Yeah. So this is this color. That was that color. Yep, I just and gave it a. Color. Yep. Yeah, I probably did that one twice. But yeah, we can leave that out so we can decide. And you're just doing kind of squiggling it up with the. With the yellow, huh? The thing that always remember with hand dye is like, like especially with one of these squiggles, go like, like right to the edges. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, that's a good tip. Especially with these squiggly ones. Yeah, so it's it's nice to do the sock blank, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's like um it stretchy, easy. But it works. Yeah, it stretches and curls a little bit, but you know what? The edges will be a little bit lighter, and that'll be part of the interest. How much I use is like. All right, on to the next. We're going to stay focused, Teddy. Okay. What do you think now? Okay. Sorry. So, Sorry. Sorry. Um, we we're trying to decide if it was funny <laughs> that I burnt my hand and that while we were recording the video, the wind just came and knocked the camera down with all of the paints all over the place. Was it funny? Kind of. Kind of. All right, so let's keep going. You have got your... <laughs> I just need to check in and see if that was funny because I feel like overturning the table. Uh, to me, that would be funny, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep doing this video. I think you might have said swear, so. Did not say swear. I said overturn the table. We are still good. So okay, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue with the demonstration. What's the next color you're doing? Uh, this. Awesome. Uh, I want to see how this looks. Yeah, you're gonna test it out here. Little dabble, do ya? That looks like. Ooh, that's another. That's an even brighter orange. I'm not going to do too much. Cause but make sure it's uniform, you know, because the thing, you know, with these sock blanks, I've seen people write, like, their name on them and then knit socks with them or knit a sweater or whatever. And that's fine, but you have to know that when you don't have a uniform pattern, the way that the coloring will come out, whether you're knitting or hooking or punching or whatever, uh, will be not uniform. So it, it's just part of it. That's the beauty of hand painting. I'm making new dots. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like that would look like sand. It, it totally looks like, like sand. Like when you hook it, it's going to come out like one, three, two, three, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, okay, so you want to go down the end with them because we don't want the video to be too, too long. So, so far, Joss has like the orangey, the light orange mandarin kind of swirl going, and now she's got her dark orange going. And this is a really good start on the pink sand backing because um, these are all complementary colors to the turquoise that she dyed for her crab. Old gold. See if that green one is old gold right there. Yeah. Is that okay? We might have used old gold up. But when it. Oh, she found the old gold. That's one of our favorite colors. And hey, use the wine. I did. Just now I did wine color, which is like maroon. And good job, Joss. I can't really see it. But yeah, it's, really it's not a super exciting color. I don't know if it's a lot of value added, but it's your piece. But I did you the wine color, and I did pink, Cushing, just pink, and I did Cushing Coral. So all of those are going to be right there for you. I'm going to use it all again because this was your favorite. Oh, it is my favorite, but I can always make more. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you use one of the new red ones that I just mixed? These are all new ones. 
it doesn't have the right name on them, but all these ones that are red hot, like steaming red hot. This? Yeah. This hot. Yeah, I don't know about that one, though. More of the pink red ones. Let me see. Is it hot? Yeah, that's one of them. I understand how you burnt your hand. This is 10 million times okay. more hot. Okay. We just won't talk about it anymore because it's super painful. Anyway, let's go. Okay. Wait, are these lines a like tether or these things? Maybe like this? Is that? Go ahead, do it, Jess. We don't want the video to be four and a half hours. We don't want it to be like a war and peace. Is that sand? Um, that's rust. It sand is the color we did for the background of the of the whole piece. Now, what do you think it looks like? Sand? Oh, it totally looks like sand. It's sand. Right here. But you know what? You did a turquoise crab. So at this point, like we've committed to doing an abstract piece, and if you do crazy colors in the background, it just adds to it. So I wouldn't worry about realism. So if we do like a little bit of Yeah, do a little bit of that too. Did you make more hot pink? Because we might have used it all up. No, we didn't. No, you still have hot pink. Go ahead, baby. It's one of my favorite colors in here. Even though I don't like pink, I do like hot pink. Yeah, well hot pink yeah. is so... Oh, that is real pretty, Jess. Real pretty. I remember hot pink. In the other video we made, we were going crazy with this. We were like... How about some hot pink in here? Yeah. yeah. Like almost every time. How about some on the edges too? Because you'll only have a few little splotches. There she goes. She knows what she likes. It's coming out real pretty, Jazz. I wish you knew how to edit music in the background. Okay, why don't you just sing to us? Up. Sing to us. You have a beautiful voice. Very. Very nice. What are you going to do next? Oh. All right, so this is one of our new colors. Ah. Ooh, I guess it's that. That might be, that's okay. That's a pretty good test. <laughs> we'll go like this. Ah, it's, it's burning me. Ah. Oh, careful. Yeah, that. I think that's the wine color, Cushing wine. Although it could be Cushing pink. Ooh, be careful. That, the yeah, lid's yeah, not yeah, on. lid's not on. All right, let's leave that for the moment. Get one of the other ones, baby. That's all right. That's all right. We can wash it off. Can you, like, see the top picture? I can. What are you going to use next? Not that, but this. Is it? You want to test that one first? It looks nice. I mean, it does. It looks green. It looks green. It looks green. It could be like a chartreuse green. Oh. Oh, It's light. very, very light green. That's my favorite color. Hey, Ted, what's up? Light green. We're recording a video, honey. You sweating it up in there? Oh, um, I need the door. Okay, you're ringing the doorbell. We were out on the back porch. Sorry we missed you, sweetie. Look at Joss go. She's going to town. Oh, that's nice, Joss. That really introduces something. Can you pick it up? Yeah, that's cool. I love it. You're doing something with the... Pretty cool. Okay. I might have wanted to use it. I think you did use that one. That's the bright pink. Did you want to introduce any totally different colors, like more blues, or are you happy with the blue just being in the crab? Okay. Actually, grape juice. Ooh, grape juice should be there somewhere. Wait, where's it? That's another green, like a mallard it's a green. It's a peacock. It's a peacock. Okay, well you like that. That's a little bit like turquoise. Turquoise. I forgot what this looks like. Okay, that's a nice purple. This, this is my sand. Yeah. Get the edges. All right, good. Well, I think we got the gist of it. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep going with this? Nope. All right. We're going to let you keep going with this, and then we'll take a look at it when it's all done, all right? Yep. Artist is doing a border of peacock. So it's going to be interesting to see how this comes out. Right, Tad? It doesn't look like a peacock, but it looks like a green. It would be it's amazing. probably more green because, you know, we've mixed these colors so many times. Yeah, and there, there's a lot of green on True. Good job. It's really good. 
Mm. It looks beautiful, Joss. Really pretty. What it's do you hard think? To close. Can you close it? I can close it for you. Are you excited to see how this undoes and, and hooks? Yep. All right, that'll be our next phase. You want to give us a thumbs up, baby? The green thumbs up. The green thumbs up. We just finished our piece. It looks like this. Looks like this. So we're going to put it into the casserole dish yeah. where it is. And we're going to actually put it into the oven at about 350 for maybe like half an hour or something. And then we're going to rinse it off and dry it out. And we're going to be ready to start hooking with it. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I'm Jocelyn. Are you, is your little face even on that picture? Come in a little bit closer, oh, baby. Hi. So we are back. And what have we got? It's part two of this wool that is finally, or this sock. Thing. Yep, Jossie's sock yarn is dried. Yep, your sock blank. This is actually worsted wool, it's not sock. Um, but it's a sock blank and it's finally dried. And you happy with it? Yeah. Yeah? You feel like we did well? It's actually the next morning. My burn was so bad. I just checked out last night in a semi rage and uh, catatonic state. But in the meantime, our wool dried, and I think she did a beautiful job. Yeah. And I was able to hook this little crab that she drew. So now it is time to put these two things together, right, baby? Yeah. She's going to do some eating the pasta, and I'm going to be doing some. Let me show you what's some, next some stuff. Tri some tripod magic. Yeah, some tripod magic. It's, yeah, it is kind of a tripod, isn't it? So I'm going to hook this now. I'm going to show you hooking this yarn. It's easy and fun. I'm going to get her a little crab back up here what a beauty huh and remember yesterday we dyed these colors too we didn't do that on camera because we've already done a lot of dyeing videos but i dyed these two colors solid for my girl joss yes. the artiste definitely in a better mood today now that the storm of pain has passed the perfect storm so there we go nice and tight this is on linen so i've got my sock blank now what we have done by using a sock blank is we have bypassed uh, some other troubles and supplies and, and necessary things that we would need if we were just dyeing straight wool. So in making us our sock yarn, I am now going to be pulling directly from it um, and not have a skein on the floor, not have to wind a skein. You know, the, the plus side is you don't have to deal with any of that. You have colored your wool and you are ready to use your wool. Um, I guess the con side is you don't get to do that classic Victorian postcard of a cat chasing a ball of yarn and getting tangled up in your supplies. You lose that fun, but you, you gain a lot, right? You gain a lot. So I'm going to pull out this white piece of string that is holding this together. And now we have got cat playing with yarn possibilities because this will just, at this point, want to unravel infinitely. So this is now my supply. It's a solid and it is unraveling at my will and I'm able to use it to hook. And the beauty of having this now to hook, the background, is Joss has painted it exactly the way that she wants it, right? With the pink sand cushing background, no, the Procam background and then a bunch of cushing dyes over. Uh, we put it in the casserole dish and heated it at about 350 for about half an hour, rinsed it out in the salad spinner and, and just dried it in the sun. And when I hook this, it won't come out exactly like this. It'll be these colors, but in an unexpected order. And it will be a lot of fun to play with because as we go along, I'm just going to double it up so it's a little bit thicker. As we go along, I just don't know what I'm getting. It's the box of chocolates, right? I just don't know what I'm getting. Um, it'll be an orangey, and then it'll be a purpley, and then it'll be a greeny, and it'll just go from color to color. And... Um, It'll be a lot of fun to hook. I will not be able to control the color scheme this way, but having colors that I like in the, in the wool already and knowing that they match our composition here and the unmeasurable fun of hooking and not knowing what color loop you're pulling up next, there's no words for that, right, Joss? Yeah. I mean, it's just super fun. I've got like a nice little sandy corner here but I know at any moment I'm going to pull up full on grape or traffic light green, you know, or fire engine red at any moment. I got a little bit of green right there. So this is just, this is hours of fun. It's literally hours of fun. So I'm not going to do this all on camera, but um, yeah, this is fun. This is a fun way 
of hooking. I've got that whole little corner in already. Let me see if we can come even closer. Yeah, we can come closer. That beautiful crab. And the beautiful He's crab a beautiful man. crab. You did him, honey. You did him. Your inspiration was Cape Cod, right? That's been a lot of people's inspirations over the years. Henry David Thoreau, lots of artists, uh, Peter Hunt, P-Tone artist, us. I mean, we're, we're very distant behind those Jocelyn other people. Jocelyn Lissenberg. Jocelyn Lissenberg, exactly. That's so I'm just, me. that's, everybody knows that's you, my angel. Everybody knows, and if they don't, they're about to, because you're gonna conquer the world with your excellent crabs. That didn't sound quite right. But you know what I mean, Jelly Bean. <laughs> so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hook this for a while, um, and yeah, I'll probably hook it for a good part of the day. To be honest, I got iced coffee, and there's a breeze here on the back porch. So I'm gonna come back to you in a while after I've hooked around his body a bit, and show you what kind of progress I've made um, in terms of the colors changing. You can see it's real easy to hook with yarn like this. It's real easy. It's already kinked, so that's one thing that you want to be aware of. It's not coming out flat, fat and fluffy and, and flat. It's coming out a little bit kinked, so it means once in a while I have to pull back and redo a loop. But in the grand scheme of things, now it's, now it's ticking me off good, but no, in the grand scheme of things it doesn't make any difference. So you want to go finish your pasta and say bye to your viewers for now and I'll come I back in a little while? Then I'll make you some more pasta. Is it possible to use the stock yarn for backing? Is it possible to use stock yarn for backing? Well, now that I've pulled that all-important thread out that was holding it, um, I would have to I would have to restabilize that because it will unravel now uh, to its heart con heart's content, which is going to be fast and furious style unraveling. But um, yeah, I mean, you could use these sock yarns for a lot of things. People do a lot with applique sweater making and clothing making. You can make a sock with, with your sock yarn. Well, I wouldn't sew a sock because <laughs> socks with seams are not the most comfortable socks. But there's a lot of things you could do with a sock blank. I just really wanted to point out that rug hooking is certainly one of them. And it is a very contained way of doing dye with only like one designated casserole dish that's your only piece of equipment with this technique and a sock blank and then you're going to get a, what is literally a skein's worth of textile to use for your hooking project and it's going to be colored the way that you want to color it exactly so there's a lot to be said for that right yeah yeah all right we'll be back in a little while with the progress of the crab now with, that sounds like something pasta. and more pasta Hey, welcome back. It's been a couple of hours. I've been working on the crab a little bit, um, a lot. And Jocelyn's downstairs playing video games, so she's quite happy where she is. I'm going to complete the video without her, wind it all up. But I have to say that child is so talented. She, you know, I'm not a huge fan of blue or yellow. Those are the colors I probably use the least in my life. And I wasn't completely on board with the blue crab, which she, she really was specific about. And um, I wasn't at all on board with the turquoise. It's, again, not one of my favorite colors, personally. But her choice of colors was unreal. The turquoise crab, and then I dyed the, the border color uh, a little bit a thicker wool, even darker, but the same shade. It was basically, it was Pro-Chem turquoise with Cushing Mallard. No, sorry, also Pro-Chem Mallard. So two Pro-Chem colors, and it made this turquoise very, very light and then much darker. And then we watched her um, color this. This is what I have left of this, sock blank. I mean, this for me, the colors couldn't be any better. She, I don't know that that child knows what a color wheel is, but this defies um, color planning perfection here. This is just unreal. This is instinctive and intuitive. The colors that she's used out of all those colors I had out are, couldn't be more perfect. I mean, let's take a real close look at what she did here. Um, this is how this sock blank came out. These are the colors, and this is how it comes out, like this. And this is worsted weight. You know, I was sitting here hooking this, and I'm thinking, I think I'm going to, using my knitting machine, I think I'm going to make some sock blanks in a thicker, bulky, uh, specifically for rug hookers, so that people can buy these blanks and do this. Because, you know, when I think about weekends away and things like that, and the possibility of being able to bring, I know I'm sideways right now, that sometimes happens. <laughs> um, I sometimes bring a small frame like this, and if I could just, this is my entire supply kit for the day. 
my little frame, my little beginner's frame, you know, my hook, my scissors, and this. And it, it's so easy, right? And I'll just show you, you know, it was very hard to stop doing this because this is, as Jocelyn would say, satisfying. Um, just pulling the end on this little thing and it just comes out like, you know, it comes out just like ribbon candy, like my, my brand, the little ribbon candy hooking thing that my mom painted. So beautiful. And each time you pull it and you start hooking with it like this, it's just, it continues to be a surprise what colors are going to come out each time. It's so pretty. It's such a lot of fun. So anyway, this is the wonderful world of dyeing. And thank you, Brenda, for this great idea for a video. I really appreciate um, chatting and, and um, coming up with ideas. That was really a winner. But I think this is a great thing for people who hook or do anything with, with material. And you want to dye and you don't want to deal with the swift and the winder and lots of pots and pans. You just put this down on a picnic table, squirt it with squirt bottles of dye, and put it in your designated casserole dish, one thing, and then you have got this, which makes this beautiful um, yarn. Whatever your color combo is, whatever your faves are, it's just gorgeous. So lots to think about here. I'm really happy we did this video. I wish I could spend more time on this today, but I've got to get some orders out. Um, I could just sit here and do this all night because it was really, really fun playing with this. So anyway, give it a shot. Stay tuned for some sock blanks that we put out with our brand, the little bit thicker, bulkier. Uh, this is worsted, but I'd like to put out some bulky so you have a faster time with your hooking and can do the same thing that Jocelyn just did. Just total home run. See you soon. Have a good night from Ribbon Candy Hooking.